My name is John Dawson, and I've been doing a series of uh, videos on intaglio etching techniques. Uh, this is actually the 11th video, and it'll be uh, the last one in this series. Um, this video concerns uh, little odds and ends of various things that I didn't cover in any of the other videos, things that I think would be uh, helpful to uh, doing uh, intaglio etchings and possibly uh, any kind of printmaking. Uh, the first thing is um, sh a Sharpie. Now, a Sharpie is, can be very useful in doing um, intaglio etchings. To begin with, you can draw on the, directly on the plate and they, uh, the lines will come up uh, clean and, and white uh, in the print. This print is called Fear of Flying. And in this detail, you can see the, uh, the wings or the feathers are all done with a Sharpie and they have uh, nice, clean, uh, white, uh, clear lines. The second thing uh, concerning a Sharpie is if you are um, drawing uh, on the plate, uh, scratching through the hard ground to uh, uh, create your image, and you make a, a little mistake, uh, you don't have to um, uh, block that out with stop art varnish. You can just uh, draw over it uh, with a Sharpie. So if you're drawing through the hard ground on a plate and uh, you make a mistake or you just don't like the line, you can take uh, the Sharpie and just uh, draw right over the line and uh, block it out. And uh, you really don't need to uh, to add hard ground or um, stop out varnish. Another of uh, the things that you can do uh, with a Sharpie uh, in uh, intaglio etching is you can create um, nice clean lines uh, for uh, geometric shapes like a square or freeform shapes that you might uh, want to put into your, um, your print with a, a very clean uh, uh, edge. So I'm uh, taking the Sharpie, I'm going to draw a couple of lines uh, on the plate. We'll do uh, uh, two of them to uh, sort of make a, uh, a nice uh, strip. And then you paint up to the edge of the line with your uh, um, hard ground or stop out varnish. And then when you uh, etch it, it's going to be a nice, clean, straight line. So you can do this with uh, just about any shape that you would like uh, to create a nice uh, sharp edge for. If you create uh, lines with the Sharpie and you're not happy with it or once you're done, you can just uh, wipe it out with a little bit of alcohol. The normal Sharpie that you find in uh, grocery stores or Walmart or art supply stores, a regular uh, plain Sharpie, is perfectly good for pretty much anything you want to do on your plate. They also come in a number of other different varieties. Uh, a couple of different ones are, uh, this is called the Sharpie Pro, and this is called the Sharpie Fine Point. Now, the only real difference between these and um, the regular Sharpie that you can buy anywhere is that um, you can get a finer uh, line with these, uh, these two um, varieties of Sharpie. Otherwise, there's no difference. They're both more expensive. And unless you want a nice fine line, uh, there's no real reason to buy the more expensive version of Sharpie. Um, Sharpies also come in colors. Uh, I, of course, haven't tried every single color. I have tried red. It doesn't seem to make a lot of difference. I would suggest, though, you stick with black to be sure that um, that's going to work uh, the best uh, to uh, resist the acid on the plate. And then, finally, there's uh, one that's called a Sharpie um, oil base. And uh, this is very different. It's expensive. It operates in a very different way, 
Um, it's, uh, it doesn't last as long. The one thing about this is, if you're um, going to have uh, your plate in the asset for an unusually long time, this uh, oil-based Sharpie seems to be more resistant to the asset and would probably be better for that purpose. Otherwise, it doesn't seem to make any real difference compared to the regular normal Sharpie that you would find in, um, in the grocery store. Okay, um, this is uh, Tarleton, which I'm sure uh, you are, all are probably very familiar with. It's used to, uh, to clean, uh, clean your plate before printing. Uh, Tarletons come uh, very stiff. They're really, uh, really full of starch. And I find that very difficult to, um, to actually get the ink cleaned off the plate. So what you can do is um, take the Tarleton, put it into a sink of water or a pail of water, and wash out the, the starch. And once you do that, as you can see, the Tarleton is much more pliable and much um, easier to use to, uh, to clean off the plate. In fact, I, I think it's a lot more efficient once the starch has been washed out of the Tarleton. In doing an etching plate, um, you may need to, uh, to proof the plate a number of times. I've had some plates that I've uh, proofed uh, 10 or 12, maybe even 15 times in the course of uh, doing the plate. And uh, so you'll need uh, to uh, have some kind of paper to proof it on. Um, this is domestic etch. Domestic etch is probably the least expensive uh, printer paper that you can buy. A, um, a piece of domestic etch that's uh, I think about 22 by 30 is around a dollar 75 to two dollars a sheet um, and this is uh, something called index paper and index paper comes in about uh, 23 by um, 35 inches almost twice as big the domestic etch is about a $1.75 a sheet for about half the size of this. The index paper is about 15 cents a sheet. If you have a, um, a paper company in your area, uh, most of them will have a handle, uh, either index paper or an equivalent, which is usually uh, about the same uh, weight and so forth and the same price as index paper. Uh, and um, if you do have a um, uh, paper company in your area and can get the index paper there, the other thing that you can also do at the same time is buy your uh, newsprint there. You may go through quite a lot of newsprint, and um, I don't remember exactly, a uh, ream of newsprint, which is around 500 sheets, is, uh, I don't I think it's around $70 or something like that. And... Um, you don't have to pay any shipping. So those are two good uh, options as far as uh, getting paper to uh, first to proof with and then newsprint that you use for a whole variety of different things in, uh, in printmaking. Well, in doing uh, intaglio etchings, you're probably going to need to mix up various concoctions, uh, thinning down um, asphaltum or making um, sugar lift. And in doing that, uh, it's very handy to have something to stir with. If you have old brushes like this, this one is uh, totally shot, uh, you can take the brush and, um, and cut the top, the brush part off. And then you have uh, the handle, which is very handy to, uh, to use as a stirrer for any of the uh, mixtures that you make that you need to have mixed up and need something to stir with. Okay, uh, one of uh, the things that I didn't have occasion to uh, talk about in a, um, previous videos was uh, the use of a roulette. Uh, if you don't know what a roulette is, it's really hard to describe. It's like a little wheel that's got um, a texture to it. They come in different sizes. This is a square one. This is an egg-shaped one. I think the square ones work a little better. Uh, you want to put down a soft ground and then you go over it with the roulette and it makes a texture um, a lot like uh, the texture of charcoal paper or um, 
a texture that's uh, somewhat similar to an aqua tint. And in certain situations, um, this can come in very handy. If you're doing an etching that's going to be in an acid uh, numerous times, it seems like uh, it's inevitable that the back of the plate gets uh, scratched up. And if you um, continue to put the uh, plate in the acid, it can eat right through the back of the plate uh, and create a hole right into the front of the plate, which uh, <laughs> I actually had happen one time. Luckily, it was in a spot that didn't really make any difference, but nonetheless, uh, it's not something you want to have happen. Um, you can try and fix that by, you know, covering the plate or covering the scratches with spray paint or gesso or something like this. It doesn't really work that well, especially if you're going to continue to put the plate in the, um, in the acid. So a better way is to buy um, some ordinary self-adhesive shelf paper. And you want to make, you want to cut the shelf paper larger than the plate. And then you're going to adhere the shelf paper to the back of the plate, which we'll um, do in just a second. Well, as I said, you want to make sure that you have cut the shelf paper uh, larger than, than the plate. Then um, you want to remove the backing and uh, hold it so that uh, you're just going to do uh, one end uh, to begin with. Um, it Because it's bigger than the plate, it doesn't have to be uh, on there perfectly. We're going to fix that later. And then very slowly put the shelf paper down, trying to avoid getting any bubbles uh, in the um, in the, the shelf paper. I'm going to take a razor blade, or you could use a mat knife, and we're going to trim off the edges. And we're going to do that on um, on all four edges, so that um, you have all the excess uh, shelf paper trimmed off. And then take a roller or a brayer and go over it so it's secured down well and uh, re try to remove any bubbles that uh, you've gotten into the um, um, shelf paper. If you're going to do an etching from a rather complicated original drawing, uh, something, uh, something like this one, um, you'll have to uh, do everything on the plate uh, backwards, uh, a mirror image, so that when um, you print the print, it's going to come out like your uh, original drawing. It's uh, very often very difficult to keep track of everything when you're trying to do it backwards. So one of the things that you can do is to uh, photograph the drawing and then uh, put it in the computer and flip it so that now you have uh, a, uh, an image that's backwards and it's much easier to keep track of everything you're trying to do on the plate uh, with uh, this photograph. Um, not every uh, photo el uh, editing um, program in the computer has the ability to flip an image. Some of the uh, ones that do are Microsoft Paint, um, Corel Photo House. Uh, there's a program I used to use years ago that I think is still available called Image Expert. And then, of course, there's um, Photoshop and Photo Elements, which, uh, of course, are very expensive. So um, that's a, a way that you can uh, uh, be able to uh, work on your plate in reverse that makes it a little easier. Well, when you're uh, uh, printing a print or printing an edition, uh, after it comes uh, through the press, it's of course damp and it has to be dried. And if you don't have access to a drying rack, um, then uh, one of the ways that you can uh, dry your prints and keep them nice and flat is to get some sheets of um, pegboard. And uh, you, uh, you place the pegboard down and you put a layer of uh, newsprint, the print, and then uh, uh, another layer of newsprint and then uh, another pegboard on top and put something heavy on it, of which we'll demonstrate here in a second. So the number of uh, sheets of pegboard that you probably need is determined by the number of uh, uh, prints that you might plan to do in the course of a uh, 
of a day. If you're going to do an edition and print, uh, you know, four a day, you're going to need um, about five or maybe even six uh, sheets of pegboard. And of course, the size of the pegboard is going to be uh, determined by the size of the prints that you are going to be doing. Well, I've been doing uh, intaglio etchings for um, over 20 years now, and uh, if, uh, you can go all the way back to um, undergraduate school. It's a lot longer than that. Uh, but when I first got uh, a press in my studio to do uh, my own uh, etchings in the studio uh, over 20 years ago now, a good friend of mine suggested that I get a, um, a journal or a notebook and keep track of uh, the steps that I did in doing each of the plates. And that turned out to be a really uh, helpful suggestion. So I've kept a, a journal um, since uh, the very beginning of doing uh, my etchings. And um, I, uh, I keep track of each of the steps that I do in doing the, uh, the plate. And that uh, has turned out to be very helpful. Um, if you were to do a, a, a plate today using a number of different techniques, and a year from now or two years from now, you wanted to do a similar thing on another plate, you may not be able to remember at all exactly how you did it uh, a year or two before. But by keeping track of that, you can look it up and see exactly what it was that you did to get the effect that you wanted to get on the plate you're doing at the time. The other thing that's very helpful about a journal is you can also keep track of the various um, etching techniques, uh, how to do them, and probably more important than that, the various formulas for the uh, different mixtures that you might make uh, for, uh, for the various techniques. Um, mixtures for uh, hard grounds, uh, soft grounds, uh, sugar lifts, a whole host of different things. And uh, it's also kind of handy sometimes to keep track of the temperature that you use on your hot plate for, um, for different things that you have, uh, are going to do using a hot plate. So um, I, would, um, I would highly recommend uh, getting a notebook or a journal and, uh, and keeping track of uh, all the, uh, the different things that you um, would do on uh, any given um, etching plate that you're working on. Well, that's, uh, that does it for the uh, this series of uh, videos on intaglio etching techniques. Uh, there was a line out of a TV show that uh, went, uh, I have all the answers, I just don't know if any of them are correct. And that pretty much sums up uh, these uh, videos. Um, there are just so many variables, and many of the techniques uh, work very well for some people, not so well for others. Um, and there are many uh, other variations and many other techniques that can be used on um, intaglio uh, etching plates that uh, I'm sure aren't included in these uh, videos. Uh, I'll be following this up with uh, some uh, examples of my own uh, prints and um, the uh, address for my web, web page and my Facebook page. And you can see the entire series of uh, intaglio etching techniques on YouTube, as well as uh, a number of other uh, videos that I've done.